It's been a really long time since my last update, but I thought I'd produce a finale episode for season one of Trying to Grow American Ginseng from Seeds. And this is a pack of Chinese ginseng from a Korean supermarket. The roots look very fresh. I tried to contact the store management and ask if this is ginseng, as in Chinese ginseng, Panax ginseng, or is it um, American ginseng? And I didn't get a response, so I'm assuming this is the Chinese kind. Uh, the roots look very fresh, and I just wanted to try to grow this as a last-ditch effort to get some ginseng plants. At least I would have something to talk about while I tried more germination attempts with seeds at my leisure. It seemed like the easy way out to me, just buy some roots, plant them, and watch them grow. Then I'd at least have something to observe and talk about while I tried more seed germination attempts. Here you can see me spraying a little bit of distilled water into this zipper bag and I zipped it up with a little bit of air space and put it under LED lamp light in my living room. You know, it was on during the day just to see if anything would happen. For the rest of the larger, more promising roots, I took a mixture of sphagnum peat moss that was heat sterilized in the oven, mixed it with some pre-washed play sand and a little bit of diatomaceous earth to prevent insect growth even though the stuff's been sterilized. So I have this self-watering pot. I put the mixture in and I basically put these as upright as I could. It took a lot of maneuvering and work, but that's basically the deal. Then I piled up the remainder of the growing medium and put a layer of sand on top. And finally, of course, I watered in the watering tray on the bottom with some 0.5% hydrogen peroxide to oxygenate the soil and provide moisture. After a few weeks, all this stuff started to rot inside the plastic zipper bag. There was just a little bit too much moisture, even though I didn't let anything sit in standing water. It just looked like these roots weren't as uh, healthy as I thought they were. However, there was one piece that showed a lot of promise. It had been broken off, you know, uh, halfway or even higher, I would guess. But, you know, it had a lot of growth to it, and it had what looked like a shoot system that was turning green coming out. So I don't think it came out any more than it originally extended, but it was turning yellow-green. Sphagnum peat moss comes with a fair number of wood chips in it, so I wanted to filter this through a strainer before I heat sterilized it and mixed it with the other two components to create a soil mixture for planting. Now, first thing seemed very promising. This so-called stem turned a dark green on the places where it wasn't a little bit yellow or brownish, but after days went by, this happened. You know, it looks like it's dying. So after more than a month, uh, it ended up in a very sorry comatose state. You know, I suspected that too much moisture in the early days led to root rot. Either that or these ginseng roots had been sterilized of life somehow and they were all destined to die through whatever treatment they had suffered uh, up until their shrink wrap packaging in the grocery store. So I had to toss this away. I'm going to make a new series with a slightly different title about growing American ginseng from seeds indoors. I want a fresh start for what's essentially going to be season two of growing American ginseng. I do have a pot outside, if you remember, with a bunch of seeds in it from season one. And that's been on the balcony. That thing molded over like crazy. I had a piece of plastic wrap in it and it went nowhere so I don't really need to show you that unless you know I still have it outside if anything happens I'll show it to you but I'm pretty sure everything in there is molded and dead so this caps off a very disappointing season one for my growing American ginseng series I tried seeds with various treatment methods and also supermarket roots that I thought were fresh uh, both were abject failures I've learned a lot though um, I'll ease up on the moisture and micromanagement and just try several different approaches to start my experimental setup in season two. And I'll post that very soon, so stay tuned to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.